So we're going to spend our whole day today, our whole morning, on food. And aren't there a lot of different messages on food? Carbs are good. Ah, oh, no, actually they're bad. Ah, oh, fat is bad. Ah, oh, actually it's good. Do, do you ever think, when are they going to make up their minds? Mm -hmm. How long have we been on the planet? Well, let's take the lowest common denominator. As a Bible-believing Christian, I believe we're about was about 10,000 years, I think. Haven't they worked it out yet? What would be the signs that someone had worked it out? A group of people had worked it out. Healthy, Healthy long life, mm -hmm. quality of life. Mm -hmm. And there are people on the planet that do experience mm -hmm. that. I don't know if you've heard of the book Blue Zone. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Time magazine. Oh, I think it was 15 years ago. I did an, also an article on Blue Zone. They looked at, we're going to particularly look at three groups of people that live long lives, commonly into their hundreds, quality of life. And the journalist actually interviewed and followed a lot of them. And one was the Okinawans, which are Japanese. I think it's a Japanese island. Very hard for McDonald's to get to islands. And there's a, there's a picture of a a um, Okinawan woman, 85, uh, collecting seaweed in the, in the shallow part around the island. Also the Sardinians, which is an Italian group of people, and he was climbing hills, almost mountains, for this 90-year-old man to check his goats and he could hardly keep up with him. Now the third group of people were the Seventh-day Adventists, and they are a group of people that commonly have much better health. So the three common denominators with these three groups of people were they're always active. And tomorrow we're going to be looking at exercise. Number two, they eat food in its natural state. A lot of them are vegetarians. The ones that eat meat, it's not a large part of their diet. And the third common denominator was they're very social. You know, we're social people, aren't we? And when we're social people, our mind is not so much concentrated on us, but mm -hmm. <laughs> on other people. Interesting that they were the three common denominators. So we're going to look at the social aspect, the emotional aspect on Saturday morning, to, which is two more days. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be looking at the activity part. But today we're going to look at the food part. I'm going to come at what is the best food to eat from the pH balance. pH is, means potential hydrogen. And when you dissolve acid in a solution, it gives off hydrogen ions. When you dissolve alkaline in solution, it gives off hydroxy ions. So the pH scale is potential hydrogen, potential hydroxy. So I'll do it in everyday language now. It's the acid alkaline balance. So up one end, we have acid. And up the other end of the acid alkaline scale, we have alkaline. And in the middle, we've got neutral. Neutral is neither acid nor alkaline. So the acid scale, it's naught. Alkaline, it's 14. And in the middle, 7 is neutral. Blood has a reading on the pH scale. And blood's reading on the pH scale is between 7.35 and 7.4. It will always be within that range. If blood pH does go up to eight, that person will go into a coma and die of alkalosis. If blood pH drops down to 7.22, that person will go into a coma and die of acidosis. So there cannot be much variation there and we don't need to worry about the pH of our blood because there are two organs that are constantly keeping it within that range. One is your lungs, and this explains why you start breathing very deeply when you exercise. We don't choose to breathe deeply, do we? But when we're getting to the top of that hill, you're starting to breathe very deeply, especially if you run up the hill. Well, why does that happen? Well, the cells need more oxygen. Remember, more oxygen gives you a better delivery of fuel. Plus, as the oxygen and the glucose are being burnt, they're giving off carbon dioxide. <coughs> Excuse me. 
They're giving off carbon dioxide and that has to be got rid of because if it doesn't, the carbon dioxide builds up in the blood and that creates a more acid environment. So that is why we start breathing deeply. So deep breathing helps to keep the balance of the pH in the blood as it should be. The other organ is your kidneys. Your kidneys do this in a fascinating way. Proverbs 14 verse 6 states, knowledge is easy to him that understands. Let's go to the smallest unit in the kidney, which is a little nephron. It's a little filtering unit. It's called the Bowman's capsule. And out of the Bowman's capsule, the filtrate comes out. And then the filtrate weaves around these tubules and is eliminated via the bladder. So what happens with these little filtering units is the blood comes in, blood comes in, weaves around the filtering units and then the blood weaves around the tubules. So let me show you where in the kidneys are these little filtering units. So the medulla is the middle part, the cortex is the outside and all the little filtering units basically sit on the outside and then the tubules weave down like this, then into the into the ureter, into the bladder and out via the urethra comes the urine. So why am I talking about the kidneys with pH? Let's say the pH of the blood is getting too acid. Well it's in this area of the blood going through the tubules that the pH is, is tested. You see we we filter out, we only filter out 1.5 litres of uh, urine a day, but out of these filtering units, 1,800 litres is filtered out. So where does that go? There's a reabsorption here. Mm -hmm. And it's in the reabsorption area that pH is being monitored. So let's say the pH of the blood is getting too acid and we'll look at why that is in the moment. Then extra acid is dropped into the tubules to be urinated out. But let's say the pH of the blood is going to alkaline. Well it is here that extra acid is pulled back out of the tubules and into the blood. So that is how the kidneys are constantly monitoring and balancing if necessary the pH of the blood. Let me give you a story to illustrate. We had a lady, she was coming to do our programs a few years ago now. She rang up Saturday night and she said, I'm very worried about coming to your retreat. I said, why is that? She said, well, I'm about to go on dialysis. I'm 57, my legs are swollen, and I'm worried if when I come to your retreat and go through the detox, I'll get worse. Do you have a doctor there? I said, we don't, but we will keep a, a close eye on you. We can adjust as we go, and there is a hospital an hour away if you need that. And if someone would say to my husband, do you have a doctor there at your retreat? You know what his answer is, no, and we don't want one. <laughs> you see, we're not doctors, we're just lifestyle coaches, teaching people how to be their own doctors. Yes, go to your doctor. Yes, go to your specialist and see what he says. And what can you do with his advice? You can take it or leave it. That's why God's given us this sound mind to consider these things. I said, we'll, we'll closely monitor you. The lady who rang me Saturday night, she said, oh, all right. Never had anyone come reluctantly to our health retreat before. <laughs> I found out why later. Her mother and her sister had paid for her and were pushing her to go. So she came. Early that morning, I was praying. I said, Father in heaven, what do I do with this lady? She's about to go on dialysis. And then God put into my mind a few things. Remember that early morning. My celery was going to seed. Did you know that celery is an excellent kidney herb? My parsley was going to seed. Did you know that parsley is an excellent kidney herb? Cooch grass is all through my yard and trying to get into my garden. I'm always pulling it out. Another kidney herb. So I gathered all of this and what I did was I made her up a litre or a quart of tea every day with the celery seed, the 
I just put the tops in. And I put some ginger in there to make it taste a little bit better so it didn't taste like grass. <laughs> As I'm consulting with this lady, I discovered that she only drinks two, maybe three glasses of water a day. She would say, look at my legs. There's, there's too much water in my body now. Can you see that reasoning? It's because she's dehydrated that the body is actually unable to handle that water. So what happens in this reabsorption here is not only pH is balanced, but so is sodium and water levels in the body. So when that goes down, can you see why the legs swell? Her blood pressure was high. Blood pressure is also monitored here. She was having three cups of coffee a day. She's a nurse and nurses drink a lot of coffee as a rule. <laughs> coffee dehydrates you even more. I discovered she had a gluten intolerance. And because she was a nurse eating a lot of fast food with lot, lots of cookies and sandwiches on the run, she also had a hormonal imbalance. She said to me, I will not be able to walk with the guests in the morning. I said, that's right, <laughs> not with those legs. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like to get on the little rebounder for one minute every hour, just doing this, just this. That's called the health bounce. <laughs> Anyone can do that. And that will stimulate the lymphatic system to start dispersing the fluid in the legs. I said, I want you to drink a litre of water a day and a litre of this tea. And that was far more than she was usually drinking. But I said, you are never to drink a whole glass at once. You have to drink it little by little by little, by little. And the kidneys can cope a lot better with that. So Monday morning, she did not walk with the guests. Tuesday morning, she walked with the guests. Her legs had gone down by half. She was so excited. She hadn't seen them like that for weeks. She was a very happy lady when she went home. We wrote a program for her to continue. She emailed me three months later. She said, I don't have to go on dialysis. Isn't that incredible? I was talking to a nurse, she said, I've never heard such a thing. Who healed her? The body. Nature alone is the effective healer. And how much better can it perform its task when given the right conditions? She said, I've had a liver function test and my liver function, the test is the best it's been for years. She said, my inflammatory markers have come back to normal. She said, I feel better than I have felt for 10 years. I'm going back to full-time work. I've lost 10 kilos, that would be 20 pound in weight. This is in three months. She was an excited lady. In fact, her mother and her sister say that they, she thanks them every day. <laughs> but when she was coming in the first day, she was not thanking them. She was saying, why have I done this? <laughs> so simple and yet often bypassed. So you can see that the kidneys not only filter the blood, they play an important role in what's called homeostasis, in balancing the body, in balancing the pH, in balancing the sodium and water balance in the body, in balancing blood pressure. I don't think you'll ever look at your kidneys the same again, will you? Mm -hmm. So you can see why the kidneys are the other organ that help to balance the pH. Even though the blood cannot change, the pH of the cell can. The pH of the cell should be approximately 6.5. That's very slightly acid and there is a reason for that. The most acidic substance is sulfuric acid and sulfuric acid travels at the speed of light. The most alkaline mineral is calcium and on the scale of speed, calcium doesn't even move. The hydroponic gardener He's always testing the pH of the water that his plants grow in because if the water goes too acid, the roots burn. If the water goes too alkaline, he doesn't get the speed of uptake of minerals out of the water and into the plant. So you can see that very slightly acid is important for the speed of all those little chemical reactions that are millions of them are happening right now. Have you ever had a swimming pool? You have to test the pH every morning because if the water goes too acid, the pipes corrode. If the water goes too alkaline, algae grows on the pipes. So just as for the hydroponic gardener and just as for the swimming pool, the pH of the human body is important because at different pHs, diseases grow. And at different pHs, it's very hard for disease to grow. So let's, let's have a look at that. 
2.6. This is where Coca-Cola sits. It's a killer. It's toxic. I was in the Fiji Islands and I was lecturing to some school children there. This is about 10 years ago. And the principal of the school said, I know the Coca-Cola factory. And he said, and I know they clean their machinery with the Coca-Cola. <laughs> Bit scary, isn't it? The gardener, he aims for a soil pH of 6.5. The Bible says we come from dust, we go back to dust, we're dust. The dust of the ground or the soil and the cell pH, very similar. But in a cellular pH of 5.5, this is where disease thrives, especially yeast, funguses and cancer. I have a lot of books in my library at home from doctors, professors, scientists, naturopaths, naturopathic doctors who are having success helping their patients to conquer cancer. And so I read them all and I, I want to find the three common denominators. Cancer loves acid. Cancer also loves no oxygen. So knowing those things, it makes a lot of sense to alkalize the tissues. And even though there's the drop of only one point, the drop of one point means 60% less oxygen available at the cellular level. The other thing cancer loves is sugar. So these are the three common denominators I find. And so when people come to us wanting help to conquer cancer, you see what we do? We suggest a diet that's highly alkalizing. We suggest ways to oxygenate the body. In fact, some health retreats have hyperbaric chambers. Have you heard of those? We have one and it puts uh, oxygen in under pressure. And we also greatly eliminate the glucose, the sugars going into the body. Now we have had uh, a few people come to our retreat that have had bone spurs. Do you ever wonder where the bone spur comes from? So there's a bone spur on the wrist. You go to the doctor, he'll say, and you'll say, what is that? He'll say, it's a bone spur. And then you'll say, but why is it on my bone and not in my bone? Because it's a calcium deposit and he'll acknowledge that. And often the answer is, uh, we don't know. But I'm about to show you why that calcium deposit goes on the bone and not in the bone. Let's say we meet someone who's breaking every law. They're breathing in bad air, they never go in the sunshine, they're living on the stimulants, which are all acid, they go to bed too late, they never exercise, don't have time, they, they're on the high carb diet. Remember that diet we had there the other day? Mm. All acid forming foods. They're, they don't drink water because they don't like the taste. I've never had a cow not like the taste. Never had a horse not like the taste. Why would humans not like the taste? Because they've tasted sweet other things. Isn't that true? In fact, uh, Joshua was saying, I think, um, introduce your children to vegetables and they'll eat vegetables. But if you introduce them to cakes and pastries and cookies, they're not going to eat their vegetables. It's exactly the same with water. Stress, worry, anxiety. Now this creates a very acid environment in the body. And the body's quickly trying to deal with that. And the blood pH is getting a little acid. It's going up to, what's well, going down, sorry, 7.35, 34, 33, we're dropping. And remember, down to 7.22 is death. So very quickly, the last resort buffer system is called on. Calcium, the most alkaline minerals pulled out of the bones in a form of calcium phosphate, comes into the blood, immediately helps to bring the balance back. 7.34, 35, we're safe. But now at a cost. We now have free calcium excess floating through the, the bloodstream. 
What's the body going to do with that? It'll dump it on the bones as a spur. It'll dump it in the kidneys, kidney stones, gallbladder, gallstones, even maybe a little bit of a build up on the eyes. What's that called? Your, your cataracts. They're all illustrations of Newton's third law of motion. To every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. I read this statement in an old book that I'm about to quote to you and I've put it in my book. This law never ceases to act as nature's equaliser, setting in motion compensatory forces to remedy every imbalance. Isn't that the true cause of disease? You now know, though, how to get rid of a bone spur, is that right? Castor oil. <laughs> the good news is castor oil will never break down your bone because remember Psalm 104 verse 14 that God gave herbs for the service of man. The castor oil comes in and says, where would you like me? What would you like me to do? Oh, the unnatural formations, that's what it'll break up, the bone spurs. So I say, well, fibroids and cysts and tumours, they're easy <laughs> compared to the bone spur, and yet the castor oil can break up a bone spur.